Hello friends, followers and channel members and welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 today looking at the Airbus A320 Neo NX from Fly-by-Wire and in particularly the new Flypad with its operating system version number two. Now this is the version of the Flypad which contains Navigraph chart integration so very excited to uh, to preview that for you in a moment. It also has a new layout as well and a host of other features which you may have seen pre in on previous versions that were greyed out are now available. So let's hop on board and take a look. So if we come down and turn the fly pad on, you'll notice the first thing once it fires up is everything looks a little bit different. So it may take a moment just to get your bearings as to how this uh, how this looks, but all of the information is as uh, it was before. It's just there in uh, in different places. So we've still got the dashboard, which is the main fly by wire tail icon up here. And in order to get this to work, we need to still go to the settings cog and type in your SimBrief username. Now, all of these items here on the right were in use previously, so you can still calibrate your thrust detents and set your volumes for, obviously, the exterior engine and wind volume. And now if we come over on to the left-hand side, all of these settings are now uh, alive and uh, ready for you to use. So you can set the uh, ideas align time and the self-testing time. I leave this to real, of course, for uh, realism. And um, we can still set the AT source and meta source as you could in the McDo. We've just now got these on the fly pad as well, perhaps a little bit easier to, uh, to navigate to. Down here on the FMGC, we can also set the thrust reduction altitude, acceleration altitude, and acceleration out altitude. Now, these are usually depending upon whichever airline you're flying, which um, their own individual SOPs, standard operating procedures. The airline that I fly for here in the simulator has uh, a thrust reduction altitude and acceleration altitude of 1,000 feet above ground level, so above the aerodrome level, and the acceleration out altitude to uh, to match as well. A lot of airlines you'll see thrust reduction altitude has been 1,500 feet above uh, the aerodrome level. So uh, two figures there which you may have seen in the past. For now though, we'll leave these at uh, all set to 1,000 as that's the standard operating procedures that I work with. So then, coming back to the dashboard, once that's set, we can pull the information in from SimBrief just as before, and that should uh, populate in a moment. There we go. Uh, so we've got our uh, flight number, flight route, we've got the weather as well. Zero fuel weight is also shown on here, as well as your cruise cost index and the average wind component, which is uh, a nice little touch to see as well. If we then come down to the next page, the dispatch page, obviously information about the aircraft. The operational flight plan we're used to seeing as well, which you can obviously zoom in and take a look at with a nice easy scroll function, either using the scroll bar to go all the way up and down or of course you can uh, move it by uh, left mouse clicking up and down and the fueling page as well you can set to instant fast and real and as before you can select how much fuel you'd like to uh, get loaded in and uh, set that uh, set that fueling going the ground services page works exactly as before so we can open the doors call the baggage external power and catering and if we go and have a look we should start to see uh, the ground crew moving around as uh, as instructed. So, onto the performance page, the uh, top of the descent calculator is there for you to use again, as shown in a previous video. So, do go check that out if you want information on how to how to use this. Uh, a lot of this is self-explanatory, and of course, you can still sync that to the aircraft's altitude and uh, and speed. Of course, we're not moving at the moment, so. Um, no, uh, no point in doing that. We're seeing that it, strangely enough, shows at minus 10 feet. We're actually at about 111 feet above the ground here in uh, in Seville. So then the next page, which is really impressive, if we come onto the charts page. 
Now, the first time you fire this up, you'll be given a little code and a website to go to, and that will allow you to sign in through a web browser and bring the navigation and charts page alive, as you can see here. What we'll need to do then is type in the aerodrome that you would like to get information for, and I still find the best way to do this is to right-alt-click and then pop that out so that when we're typing into here, we're not getting any, uh, we're not putting any key information into the uh, into the simulator. So we can type in um, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, and uh, strangely enough, just as we're trying that, for some reason, it's uh, not allowing me to actually click on the uh, on the popped out window screen. So this is still being tested at the uh, at the moment. So I would imagine that's something that's uh, to be uh, to be fixed. But if we did type in something like uh, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie which is of course Manchester Airport, we can see that we would get all of the charts available. So the star, the approach, taxi, instrument departures and uh, reference charts. And give that a second and you'll see that that all pops up. Now as I say, this is still a work in progress, hopefully to be released soon. Most of the bugs have been, uh, have been worked out. But as you can see, this particular chart is a portrait, and we can't at the moment navigate up and down to uh, to see the bottom half of the chart. If we do select a chart, however, which is horizontal like this, well, this one works absolutely fine. We can, of course, zoom in ourselves, or they've actually got a little zoom in button there, and that displays the chart on the full screen, which is really nice and uh, and handy to see as well. So. Really looking forward to using this in the stream. It shouldn't be too long before this is uh, this is made available. And um, all I can say is a big well done again to the Fly by Wire team for continuing to make this aircraft amazingly realistic here for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So please do give them a like and uh, drop on over to their Discord server as well if you have any questions. If you do have any issues, then please do leave a comment on the video down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. In the meantime, please do consider also hitting the subscribe button, turning on the notifications bell to receive notifications of uh, live streams and of course new videos. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.